Uh, and what I wanted to discuss with you today is um, a, a, an issue which, which I think is very important. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's one of the issues that has made me, has given me the possibility to prescribe correctly in many cases. So it is a very important issue, but at the same time is not very clear. And that issue is the issue of underlining. How we underline, why we underline a symptom. Every symptom has a particular meaning for the patient and for the doctor. The meaning of symptom is not always the same between the patient and the doctor. And that has to be stressed from the beginning. You know that we say if the patient says a symptom with intensity and clearness and it is uh, uh, it is um, what's the word um, self-produced uh, what's called the English word spontaneous Spontaneous. If it is spontaneous, then it is important. Of course, it is important. And that such a symptom we will underline three times. But many times I have seen, I have seen, a case, a paper case, a in which we have this underlining, and this underlining are useless. What is missing? So we said spontaneous for those spontaneous, intense, and clear, clear. If somebody says, I have a very strong headache, you get this description many times in the headache cases, where the headache is terribly strong, and I have to take immediately, I have to take painkillers and things like that. And you try to get a description of the headache, and the description is not clear. It is, you know, my head, um, I feel it. Um, that symptom already takes second rate. It is not a, an important symptom for you. When it is, when it comes, oh, it's so great. You ask when it comes, and they say it's so intense. So that means the information is not there. And therefore, that information, which is not clear, though it is intense, though it is spontaneous, is useless because all remedies have the possibility to have headaches. So a spontaneous and intense uh, symptom has to be clear as well. And if the main symptoms of the 
patient are not clear. It is the ex our experience is that such cases are difficult cases to treat, and, and most probably you will not be able to find the indicated remedy ever. They will stay with their headaches the rest of their lives, and uh, you will be able to change a little bit the, the intensity or the, the location or things like that. So, um, in the underlining in which you do, and which corresponds to the underlining of the repertory and the materia medica, bold letters, italics, and ordinary, eh? there is a correspondence, bold, bold letters, very strong. You have to find a corresponding of the symptoms of the patient, a corresponding, with the corresponding intensity in the repertory. You understand this, huh? You all have the repertory and you all, do you all have the repertory? Not with you, I mean you work with, uh, is somebody who does not know what is the repertory? So I have to ask these questions because uh, maybe <laughs> in the olden times, many homeopaths thought that they could work without a repertory. Because what is there? If you know the material America that George has in his head, that's enough. No, that's not true. I look on the repertory every time. I have to look at least a few times in the repertory. And if one is basing his prescriptions only on materia medica, the materia medica which he has in his head, is going to miss most of the cases, most of the cases. So this work, it's very important and it's the crux of the matter. What is going I mean, whether you are going to find the remedy or not, it will depend whether you will pay special attention to certain symptoms. Special attention. This is, as an idea, is where you pay most attention. The, this is the idea behind. If you, if you have I give, you, I give you a project, you take each other's case, and then you enumerate symptoms, 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 24, 25, 30 symptoms. You say, I got 30 symptoms from the patient, I am good. No, because these symptoms are not evaluated in a, so they can become three-dimensional. It can become alive. Symptoms which are flat, just enumerating of the symptoms, is like a picture. You see the picture of a person, the picture on a, on a piece of paper. Once you put emphasis into different symptoms, that, 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 then becomes three-dimensional, then becomes alive. The picture becomes alive. And for homeopathic prescribing, this is absolutely necessary to do. You cannot give a case and on a paper, and in this case, there are only written symptoms. Unless you have given the evaluation, your evaluation. Now the evaluation is something very subjective. Right? The evaluation is, I see it this way, he sees this way, he sees it. the other one sees that way. And that is the problem, where the problem starts with the underlying. Because 
And you will see it when we take a case and I ask you, how much did you underline that symptom? You say one time, two times, three times. Some cases, of course, the whole class will say three times. That's okay. Or the majority will say three times. It's okay. But it's never that everybody perceives the symptom in the same way. So there is a subjective element into underlining a symptom. And when it is pathology, it is clear for everyone. The headaches, how much you write headaches, how much you underline in this case headaches? Three times, yes, because very intense. But headaches which have not a clear description, either you underline three times or two times or one time, you may even take the symptom and throw it out of the evaluation. A symptom which is very strong, you can take it and throw it out. Why? Because no modalities, no peculiarities. Eh? So, find in the organon where Hahnemann talks about this subject. The subject of taking into consideration, huh? into consideration, you take it only the peculiar symptoms and the other paragraph in which he says, even an intense symptom, even a, it's of no value. <laughs> By the end of the seminar, you should know by heart <laughs> organ. <laughs> you see, I do not, I do not uh, say things of my own. I. Uh, or let us, I will tell you a different, different uh, way, I will tell you. For a period of time, I thought I was telling things of my own. When I reread the organ on 30 years later, I found out that actually Hahnemann had, had noted down almost everything which I thought I had discovered or it was important in the homeopathic uh, um, practice. It's very strange. Because I thought, what is this symptom? Totality, totality, and you hear totality, and you read totality. And uh, then you come to the point through the realization that it is not totality. Sometimes it is totality, yes, but sometimes. The most of the time, most of the time, is not totality, is peculiarity. Perceive what is individual in the case. Perceive what is peculiar in the case. So, Here, in this case, in, in, in uh, homeopathy, you take a case and you struggle taking the case. Unless you reach a point where you have taken enough information that is reliable, well underlined, which is peculiar and which is clear, 
you will not be able to have the remedy. I give you, I give you an example, a gross example. It comes from my experience of, of yesterday. I was looking at a case, and the case was going for silica because of constipation and uh, and uh, constipation and chilliness, chilliness, and then it went towards sepia because of leucorrhea, etc. And leucorrhea, uh, constipation. And chilliness, uh -huh. or the other goes towards uh, sepia. Huh? And uh, then the bloatedness came, the bloatedness, tremendous bloatedness with burping. Chilliness, dissipation, bloatedness, no, like a podium, like a podium, eh? And then came the symptom. Better in the sea. <laughs> this is my life. My life is uh, the sea. I can eat in the sea and sit in the sea. I feel rejuvenated, so powerful, so strong, that symptom. If you ignore it, and they had ignored it, the previous homeopaths who were given uh, uh, remedies, if you ignore that, which is clear, spontaneous, intense, and peculiar, then the other fits. Constipation, yes, Mendoram has constipation. Uh, leucorrhea, yes, Mendoram has leucorrhea. Uh, chilliness, yes, Mendoram can be chilly. But, many times, and he, this is the problem, and this is the written question of a student who wrote to me something very, very important. He said, dear sir, <laughs> how can, I have not understood, how can we recognize what we call the uppermost layer? How can we recognize this uppermost layer, and this is this is a question. Eh? This is a big question eh? that that not easy, not easy, because the picture will be like this. The picture will be like this. Some symptoms of the third layer may be coming up, as you know. How do you recognize this? And this answer, you have to couple it with this information to be able to perceive what is more, most important in the first layer. I give you, I give you the same example. The same example I gave you, silica sepia medorinum. I will give it to you now in another way, in another context. Um, chilliness, quite strong, underlined two times. Constipation. Quite strong, you underline it two times. Brittle nails, underline it one time. Leucorrhea. What kind? Yellowish white. Leucorrhea. Underline it three times. Better in the sea. You ask. Your mind went to Medorinum. You ask uh, how you 
and says, I feel fantastic in the sea. And then you pursue this matter. I say, you feel fantastic exactly how you feel, etc. You feel better in your health. And the patient understands that this information is important. And as you, as you talk and you investigate, she comes out with the information that she used to be much better. I used to go crazy about this. Not so much anymore. Uh, uh, uh. Here, you have a different evaluation because, uh, let us say here, this blue is better in the sea. Better in the sea. You see, this symptom pops up on the uppermost layer as well. But when you take out the two other layers, you will see that this symptom on the third layer is very strong. So a symptom that was there strong and now it is not so strong, it indicates an indication for a lower level, which now has been overcome by another remedy. So you have to be aware all the time what is the information that I have to evaluate. I mean, just don't go, just rush and make a prescription, you know, medorinum. Uh -uh. Not this time. Medorinum, in order to be prescribed, this has to be the better in the sea. This symptom here, very prominent, the most prominent of the symptoms. It's not a symptom in the way that we say pathology symptom. Maybe it's not even a symptom for us that we know the materia medica. It is a very important symptom. And here comes the idea that how can we recognize the symptoms? The symptoms we can recognize only if we know materia medica. That means a peculiar symptom it is not an idea peculiar. It has to be recorded in the Materia Medica and in the repertory to be useful to us. A peculiar symptom which has never been recorded in the Materia Medica or in the uh, repertory is useless. Is useless. You can record it or if you cure it, you can say that peculiar symptom was cured by that remedy, and from that onward, we may have some information. But it is not useful for us. But I'll tell you something else that also, you see, you think you, think you know all that. You think you know. But this information is not, is not how can I say, um, knowledge information is not, a, is not simply information. It is experience together with information. It's experience. Because you know your Materia Medica. Eh? As we learn the Materia Medica, we know the important things of the Materia Medica or the peculiarities of its remedy. And then we hear and some of the symptom strikes us as peculiar in this particular case. And you say, which remedy, which remedy has that? Huh? That, is, that is important to search and to search in the repertory, to search in the computer, to search in the Materia Medica, to find out. Because the peculiarity, the peculiarity, it may be um, 
said by the patient in a passing way, in a passing way, because what he concerns, what he is concerned about is his headaches. What he is concerned is his, uh, his uh, abdomen, is his colitis. What he is concerned is his stomach pain. Huh? He is not concerned that uh, um, that um, by eleven o'clock he has an empty stomach every day and has to eat something. He says, "Who cares about that? I take something and I eat." He does not even know he has it. Huh? In this way, he will not spontaneously give it to you. He will not be intense. He will, it will be clear, that means he will describe it exactly, and he will downplay it. He will say it, passant. he will say it, hmm, I have also, what's there, what's there, nothing. But for you, that you have symptoms of sulfur already appearing, some of it, that is gold. <laughs> that symptom makes a prescription for sulfur. Because 11 o'clock, we know sulfur cases, they have an empty feeling and they have to eat something. Otherwise, they will feel nauseated. Sometimes this symptom, it's a pre-runner of a possible um, duodenal ulcer. And when it comes to the second stage, this emptiness becomes nausea and they have to spit, you know, salivation comes and they have to spit. And they will say, every morning I have a nausea. Huh? And there is a word in, 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 in Greek, I don't know the English, uh, Ligura. Is somebody who no, understands Greek? Yeah, you don't know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a emptiness together with nausea. Something between between emptiness and nausea. It's not clear nausea. And they suffer, they suffer quite a lot. Huh? And uh, and uh, they may have also they have come because they have a what's called. A, cervical syndrome, or uh, they have uh, periarthritis, or whatever. And with this symptom, immediately your mind goes to sulfur. So in practice, in practice, you see, <laughs> I, I, I will give you another, another as you progress now, you become more and more experienced. I will, I will give you some tricks. For those that they have listened to me doing analysis of cases, in Chile, in the, here, in there, take a case. Hmm? And I come out of the class and then I make the analysis. Huh? What usually I do is when a patient says, something like this, I, I don't investigate it too much, so the students will not understand that I pay special attention to that. And the students, most of the students, they lose the point. It, what, what is the difference between me paying special attention, he said something, a peculiar symptom, I note it down, I pass it. I let it be as the patient said it. Go to the class, we analyze the case, nobody mentions that symptom. He says, there is another symptom, there is another symptom. Usually, I, you, I, I, I ask the class, I pressurize you, and it's gone out of your mind. The whole class have not noticed that important symptom. You see how important it is to 
connect, to connect the information from the patient to the information of the Materia America or the repertory. Because unless you know that such a thing exists in the Materia America, you cannot go and say, well, maybe this is <clears throat> an important symptom. So, going back in this case here. Huh? This, the first is Arnica. You see, you may have a case, a case which has meets Arnica first, then Cipria, then Medorinum. Some symptoms of Cipria may be appearing here and there, and some symptoms of Medorinum also. But what you are looking for is to make a picture of a remedy out of the most important symptoms. Don't take this, don't take this, don't take this, don't take, don't take that, don't take that. The most important symptoms. And what is very interesting is to evaluate the symptoms which are most recent. The symptoms which are more recent and, and more strong lately. These are, this is the secret. How can you find out what is the uppermost layer? How many times, you cannot imagine, how many times, I have seen cases, I have seen cases which have been treated by homeopathy and they cannot spot the first remedy. They spot the second, they spot the third, eh? because here it's better in the sea, you give better item, no effect. And, and you lose the first remedy you lose natrum muriaticum, for instance, natrum muriaticum eh, is the first remedy, not arnica, natrum muriaticum. Why? Because it has gone through a lot of grief. And you have to take out that before CPA can act. But then in such cases, you, you cannot imagine how the main symptom will appear that has not changed after natum muriaticum, the headache, will appear has not changed. Yet, the headache will have slight changes that will point out to sepia. The headache that was more generalized has gone now more, I can say it's more on the left side more on the left side, put your hand here. Already is a sepia sign, you expect sepia. You see this sign, left side here, over the left eye. And already you have confirmed sepia. Yet the patient says, I am the same. His headache, her headache is the same or appears to be the same. Actually, in reality, it has changed dramatically because of this of these changes on the uh, mental emotional picture which is not so much uh, natrum muriaticum anymore and has gone to sepia You see a child, you see a child that he has, uh, he has uh, vomiting and he has uh, easy vomiting and he has uh, uh, pains here and there, like rheumatic pains and, and you go to the mental picture and you see that child is really lacking self-confidence. 
And the lacking of self-confidence is strong. What are you going to treat? The nausea, hypercacuana, hypocrisy? Are you going to treat the Rastock symptoms that there are there? No. You are going to treat this insecurity of the child first, and let the nausea be much more. Let the pains be much more. But the self-confidence will increase, and then the physical symptomatology will pop up. And then you treat this symptomatology. If you go straight, you see, but the mother is interested that the child is vomiting. I say, yes, yes, he's vomiting, but, uh, <laughs> but this is important. What is prominent? The child who is barita carbonica child, let us say. Um, and it is insecure and cannot learn and cannot stand up and say her opinion eh? in front of others, etc. That child will remain in that range. That means you would not become a very self-confident child. That is, it's another character. It's another personality. Here, in, 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 in Barita Carbonica, we have to correct in mental emotional pictures what is pathological upon the personality. The personality of this child is to be uh, shy. It's a very shy child. It may remain a shy child the rest of her life. But the pathology is that she has absolutely no character to get up and, 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 and speak in the, in the class and say her lessons. The moment that the teacher asks her, a barita carbonica, says, tell us about uh, the history question, she looks like this, She's terrified. She searches, ah, so very well, <laughs> you know. barita carbonica. She will answer, but she will remain as a personality, not a, overextended, in a, in a, 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 somebody who is, a, who is a, an extrovert. No. And then, what you will see later on, for Rastox, you will see again a shy person, a person who is not very... Uh, uh, forward, but the symptoms of Rastox now been exaggerated a little bit, point out to the next remedy. All this, uh, of course, all these uh, theoretical aspects, uh, we have to see it in practice and to see it in cases, because don't get uh, it's panic, I, I understand, I see some panic in, in some eyes. Uh, it's like, how the hell we are going to do this? I mean, it's absolutely impossible, I forget it. Not me, I cannot do it, I don't understand it, things like that. I, I can perceive this, but I can tell you that this is something which is learned. It can be learned. It is not, it is not so subjective as it might look at this moment. It can be learned, and you will be able eventually to perceive, especially with the knowledge of the Materia Medica, where in the Materia Medica we try to spot the personality of the pathology, of the remedy. Eh? We spot what is what, is, what are the three, four points that we need for that remedy? So, as you learn the Materia Medica, and you're looking 
at a case. It was a, a beautiful case in a uh, in previous seminar uh, where I taught Nax Moschata. I taught Nax Moschata. And uh, some doctor have brought a case. And she goes there. And there she is, she is using the same expressions as the ones that we have used in the class. I mean, absolutely the same expression. You see, they come back, oh, the, the whole class is elated, you know. Yeah, this is a Nax Moscata case. Of course, it's a Nax Moscata case. How this happened, I don't know, by synchronization, or what was the, the, the reason, because it's very improbable, very improbable that you may get uh, uh, such a remedy in the same seminar. So the students, in one day are taught here, and the next day are taught by the patient. The patient is really talking without knowing what she's saying, of course. And uh, then, what, what was important? The patient was concerned with her headaches, but she was describing the state the mental state of Nax Moschata. And then all the students say, forget about the headaches, go to the... <laughs> that, is, that is obvious, yes, that's obvious. Yes? George, in this last case I have difficulties because you said, uh, uh, take this bar Barita Caponica child and it develops rheumatism and nausea. And just recently, do I still take the Barita Caponica state first? If it's very acute rheumatism, mm. which yeah. goes to Rostox, mm. do I still give Barita Caponica first? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Very good. Very good question. Very good question. You see, Margit asks, what is, I mean, these are acute symptoms of uh, uh, whatever, um, are you going to take the mental state more important than the acute? I did not say exactly that. You see, what I described is a child who comes for this rheumatic pain and nausea and different other things, and the mother is concerned, and she gives you all that, but in the same time, she gives you a picture of Barita Carbonica. Now, you will notice that this acute state is not so acute. It's not so, it's not so bothering, really. Maybe later on they will become bothering. But the mother is concerned, you know. Uh, she, has, she has this pain here, you know, and she tries to find different symptoms here and there which are not important, which are not uh, really strong symptoms. If the child comes with an acute rheumatism, you don't go to uh, directly, unless it fits with the picture, of course, of the case, etc. You take very much into consideration the fact that the child has been having an accident, eh? and she has developed some symptoms of arnica. And that will be the first. And this is the difficulty, of course. When this and when that, that is the problem, really. That, otherwise, it will be easy. You see, the, pro the thing is that you are dealing with something alive. An organism is something alive. Is not, uh, uh, you cannot put, put them in boxes and say that box, this box, and that box. No. And you have to, to deal with each case in such an understanding that the organism is, is acting all the time. An organism may be one day phosphorus, one day he has phosphorus symptoms, and the next day he has sepia symptoms. And then it goes like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. And changing all the time. And then you take this case and you say, neither phosphorus nor sepia, 
changing the symptoms all the time, falsatilla. You see, many times, many times after a remedy, you give a remedy, you give a remedy, and immediately after the remedy, because of the reaction of the remedy, eh, develops a, a, a picture of a second remedy. Don't go and give it. Huh? You gave a remedy, and the next day you have a reaction. It looks like sepia. It looks like phosphorus. A lot of discharge from the vagina or some uh, uh, nose bleeding. Nose bleeding and thirst next day. Uh -uh. Wait until it settles. And if nose bleeds and thirst continues, for one month, two months, three months, yes, that is the time you will, the picture of phosphorus has come up. The problem with today's diseases is that they are much more complicated than what they were treating Hahnemann and Ken and all these uh, uh, big masters. We are faced with a much more complicated uh, situation here because of vaccinations, because of chemical drugs, because of pollution, because of stress of life. The pictures have changed totally. And therefore, more and more we have what Hahnemann called one-sided diseases. We are talking here about what Hahnemann talks in one-sided diseases, one-sided, one-sided. Find me the paragraph. One-sided diseases. This idea of <clears throat> underlining, of course, <coughs> I brought into the picture. But if you take and you read carefully this, the uh, writings of Hahnemann, you will see this idea coming through. The idea of repetorization was always necessary, always was necessary because from the very beginning, the Materia Americas and the repertories were evaluated in three, at least three grades. So there is a need for us to go accordingly. And if a remedy <clears throat> has has a symptom which is even general symptom, but which is spontaneous, intense, and clear, it may itself give you the direction of the remedy. Hmm? If I describe to you, she comes there with headaches, eh? and it is mostly on the right side, eh? and it is maddening headaches, very strong, and it is throbbing. The headache is <laughs> And she wants, the window is closed, and she has to lie down. What you will say is the remedy? If I say there is a right-sided headache, uh, it comes here and goes up to there. And when it's very intense, it has to vomit. What is the remedy? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is one symptom, the headache, 
as he describes, severe headache, right side extending to the right occipital protuberance. Okay. Then second, he says that when this headache is strong, I have to vomit. There is nausea and I have to vomit. Nausea and vomiting. Right side occipital. What is? This is a matter only of knowing Materia Medica. This is a case, if this is strong, it doesn't matter now all the other details. It is a case of sanguinaria. Sanguinaria. It does not matter because it's a right side extending right and, uh, and, and vomiting, nausea and vomiting, sanguinaria. Forget all this. You give sanguinaria, pure. Only on this symptom. You get the other right-sided, very severe, throbbing, bam, 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 bam. Oh, with, the, with the pulsation. Eh? He, has to take, he has to lie down, cannot move. Uh, that is belladonna. That is belladonna. You cannot confuse this with that because it's clear. It's clear. It's clear the description of sanguinaria here. And it's clear the description of belladonna on the other hand. You are not allowed later on to confuse this information. <laughs> because it has been described very clearly in the books, and the person describes it exactly in the way that the provers have felt it. I get it. That is Belladonna, and that is Sanguinaria. Now, in Belladonna case, if I had said to you that is worse jar from jar. You know jar. Huh? Any any jar. You lie down in the bed and somebody comes and sits in the bed. Whoa! You will shout. Belladonna. Sanguinaria does not matter. Then it becomes more clear for Belladonna. <coughs> Both they have photophobia. Both they, they need they need to close the windows dark with the strong headaches. Most of the patients they require they have a photophobia. They require the curtains down. That is not characteristic. The characteristic is the throbbing, the location and the throbbing. Location and throbbing, the first remedy is belladonna. Where's jar? Then you ask one question. How do you feel if somebody just jerks you a little bit? <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> I can't stand it. Belladonna. 